ladies and gentlemen, it is one of those years where a lot of my coworkers are having children. So I have another baby shower gift that I'm going to do. This friend, uh, she uh, and her husband have a very, very specific color scheme. I'm going to put it here. It's incredibly specific. And uh, the husband is an artist, so or a photographer and artist. So he's really picky. I wanted to do a uh, painting for them, but he was being ridiculously picky and even the wife was getting frustrated with him and it was kind of funny. So instead of offering what I normally do, I'm going to do something different. So I went to this store. It's a store you see in a lot of malls in Sweden. It's really cool, they've got craft stuff. They have a color scheme of duller handmade kind of color tones, which fit the uh, parents color scheme perfectly. I cannot pronounce the name, so I jokingly call it the Soylent Green Store, and my husband mocks me. But let's see what I've got for a plan. I have posts for a garden. I have green needle felted balls. I have a saw that I stole from the school that I will return once summer is over. Gray yarn, needle felted flowers, white wool roving, purple needle felted balls, twine, and dinosaur fabric. This is just for me. What is my plan? I'm gonna make a mobile. Let's get started on the basics. So the overall process of this thing took me like five or six hours in total, most of it being spent on the actual felting of the later pieces. But the beginning took a while because I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Now I needed to create a loop for the whole mobile to hang from. So what I did is I actually tied multiple loops of string together and then kind of wove and braided in between them, creating one thick, solid braid of yarn uh, to support the whole thing. I knew I wanted it to be a beefier bit because the whole thing was going to be not light and needed something a little stiff to keep the, the balance. The next pieces I did was to saw and cut the pieces of wood. I wanted them to be in like slowly uh, longer shapes, cutting uh, provided to be a little difficult because I was not prepared at all. I didn't have any sandpaper or any such things, so instead I used a nail file. And it worked pretty well. Sanded off all the splinters and hard edges and uh, it worked. I definitely, uh, if I do this again, I'm gonna be more prepared because uh, I wasn't very prepared to do this at all. It took a long time with a nail file too. But it worked. Splinter free. At least as best I could get it. The next part was also very difficult because I didn't have anything to make holes in the wooden planks uh, except some screws. So I wound up laying down a towel and taking some nails and screws and basically hammering into the towel and wedging around the screws to make the holes a little bit bigger. And this is how I made the holes in the wood to uh, do stuff. I wish I had an owl, 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 stabby ice pick looking thing. That would have made it a lot better and faster, but you know, I'm an art teacher, not a woodcraft teacher. I'm not prepared for all that mess. This worked though. Just took a long time. Figuring out the center hole was a whole nother difficulty. Um, but I think I managed it basically. I, I did the first hole and then um, 
I created kind of an X pattern with the last little inch to make sure they were centered. And then I would kind of stab through the hole and like triple make sure. It's a lot of time that would have gone faster with the right materials. Okay, so I'm going to be using lots of different tools. I'm putting my first string through the center to hold it together. And I actually have, you see that uh, white needle with the bent end? That's a needle felting needle. Um, and what's cool about that specific needle felting needle is it has backwards barbs. And I end up using this tool a lot to help me pull things through because most needle felting barbs uh, push things forward where this makes things follow it through. So I could stab into something and then the barbs on the needle would grab onto it and I could use it to pull through holes and various other things. The skinny wire you see is another thing. It's a piece of wire that I pulled out of a piece of moldable ribbon. And what I wound up using this a lot for is to basically thread uh, the string through needles and other objects because the, the yarn was chunky. And that helped a lot too. Now we move on to the actual needle felting. And at this point, uh, you probably have noticed, and I'm generally terrible at it, a lot of stuff is off screen slightly. And this is something I've only been terrible at, and I get a little bit better at it as we get into the other felted parts of this project. But I took the wool cotton roving, or not cotton, wool roving, and tied it into neat little knots and then felted it together for security tucking in the ends and I made little tiny puffy clouds. And I really like these because it kind of had a Celtic knot feel and you know it's not exactly a cloud but it just lends to, I don't know, texture and fluff and that kind of neat stuff. So I actually really really enjoy these clouds and might actually make myself a garland or something with something similar later. So I threaded the strings onto the spokes, the, the fence posts, and then you see me here using a really fat doll needle and threading the little clouds one by one onto the strings. And then I dumped out my little wool balls and these were like really dense. I actually had to brace them against the wood to get them through and then I realized you know what I don't want to get too far ahead on my design so I started working on my bunny rabbits. What I wound up doing is I wound up using two balls for each body and then a half ball for the head. I then took just a sheet of felt and cut little ears and went ahead and sewed those on so they didn't have a opportunity to be pulled off very easily. They could still be pulled off through the side, but I wanted to make sure they were securely on there. And I basically sewed together with the yarn little caterpillar looking dudes for the base of the bunny bodies. Now this actually saved me a lot of time because the wool I'm working with uh, doesn't felt together very well in coarse shapes. So this way I'm not wasting too much of my colored wool and I'm not wasting too much of my time and I can just on top of these kind of bunny mannequins do the fur and the color and everything that I actually wanted to do. So the next couple pieces and how I worked this is I did the back legs of the rabbit first, um, creating a long noodle that I'm going to cut in half and felt on and then a smaller, shorter noodle for the front legs. Then I chose my color and slowly started felting it down onto the kind of caterpillar form that I made. Now, each of these rabbits took me probably about an hour to complete, like on their own. Short, because the whole project only took me like six hours, but I mean, it was, a lot longer than I'm used to working on single small needle felts, but these are also a lot more dense and secure. And the wool I have was pretty hard to work with. I miss, I miss my wool in Texas, and someday it will be returned to me. But until then, I'm using this wool, and it works. It's beautiful. But golly, did it take me forever. 
Samantha felt each and every single one of these cutesy bootsy bunnies. I followed the same process for each rabbit afterwards, creating the long foot noodle and then creating the tiny leg noodle or hand noodle, then covering with wool and then sticking all of the little pieces together. Rubbing the wool between your hands or onto a surface like the towel helps kind of felt it together, especially if you're going for a very flat, felted, not fluffy appearance, which is what I wanted for the structure of the, the feet. And honestly, all of the rubbing together made my hands really soft, but also hurt a little bit because I had to do it so much for so long just to get the shapes and everything that I wanted. I'm uh, hopping around a little bit here. Yeah. Hopping, uh, because literally it was just the same process over and over again. Make a leg noodle, make a hand noodle, cover bunny, and like move on continuously. Something I did that I really enjoyed is I actually took the same wool from the clouds. Uh, if you look at the screen you can see the white wool to the left side is fluffier and scratchier where the wool to the right is kind of shinier. The wool on the right was the one I used for the clouds and it was a really nice soft wool. And what I wound up doing is just cutting little lengths of it and uh, using that for the bunny tails. At this point, I had a white rabbit, a tan rabbit, and a dark brown rabbit. And I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So I actually wound up doing some multicolored rabbits as well. So this rabbit started out as white, white legs, white feet, white arms, white belly, and then I went over with kind of a pretty brown gray, nice natural hair kind of color. And I think this is probably my favorite rabbit out of all of them, just because it's got like that nice neutral, uh, multi-toned fur because if you look at it, it's not just one color gray you've got some lighter strands and some darker strands and it created a really really nice color combination by this time i'd really gotten the bunnies down to a science and should i ever need to make needle felted rabbits again i'll probably do the same process i hope i don't have to make needle felted rabbits again anytime soon next we have ourselves another dark brown rabbit and like the previous one i actually wanted to go over and add another tone. So what this rabbit is, is it's dark brown with kind of a more milk chocolatey color laid over top. And I made sure to put some of the fur on the arms and I really like the overall pattern. And at this point I realized that the color of the kind of yellowy tan rabbit was standing out. So I made him kind of like a spotty calico bunny. And I feel like it neutraled him out a little bit and added some more Kind of color to it and then I actually wound up taking the white rabbit and doing the same and giving it cream spots because there'd only been one cream so far. Now here is the fun, excuse my very messy window, but you can see I've got a cat bench hanging in my window. I've shown it in a couple of my previous videos of cats sleeping up there adorably and I I uh, used the string and hung the mobile from that and then I started hanging the various bits and bobs. You can see I've already started here. There's several parts where I just worked calmly and forgot to record, but I am threading my needle carefully. As you can see here, it was not easy to thread the needle but I had worked on the, the little balls and the clouds, so I had a process on there. And then I could put the string through, and I wanted this kind of cascading look where uh, some of the ones were going farther down and they were evenly spaced, even though when you unfold it, it wouldn't look like that, but because they were evenly spaced as I set it up, it would have this really nice spaced, you'll have to see. In the end you'll see it all together and it looked really nice and I'm proud of it and this thing wound up kind of massive uh, a lot bigger than I meant it to 
but I still think it's really cool and I work really hard. I'm trying to decide what rabbit to hang, in what order. It wasn't too hard because I'm actually putting it through between the two balls, so I'm not having to stab as intensely. I'm not tying anything yet because, again, I want to make sure everything is spaced right. In the end, I had always wanted to make a baby mobile. I'm very glad I did. Are there problems with it? Yes. Are there balance issues? Definitely. In the end, I actually wound up taking some twine and wrapping it around the bases of the uh, posts just to make sure it had a little better tension to hold itself open. You still have to balance it well but not near as much, because the wood against just the plain wood was really slippy. It wouldn't hold it. I really hope that the parents like it. Um, I like it personally because you can hang it flat against a wall or hang it 3D. That's a choice you get to make. The materials were really fun to work with. I really like the color tones and the limited color palette. And just like I said, it's something I always wanted to do, and I haven't needle felted in years proper, and it's a skill that I've always been happy I knew how to do, but basically since moving to Sweden I haven't really done it like at all. Here is the complete mobile. Um, balances pretty well, please ignore my messy living room with cat toys everywhere, but I think it's charming. You see what I mean about everything being evenly spaced? It's not really spaced with each other, but it's just got this nice angle. The bunnies look like they're flying through the air. And yeah, this massive thing, I'm proud of it. It was cool. I hope they like it, and I hope it hangs around for years to come. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, Thank you to my patrons, Jamie, Hans, Mom, Dad, Cindy, and Kaze. Thank you for putting up for me, putting up with me this summer when I've been a terrible poster and school's about to begin. Hopefully things will get back to normal. If not, I guess I'll let you know. Till then. Bye! You're looking at five or six hours of footage greatly sped up. And, uh, okay, I, I love you. You're adorable, but get out of the room.